Hi guys, Alritian back again. Welcome to my channel for those who are new. Um, today we're gonna be making, as you can probably guess it, a battle board. That's right. So, have a look. And the nice thing about these boards, or the way that I make them, is you have your more apocalyptic terrain on this side, but when you flip it over, I made some more regular looking street terrain. So, yeah, this was actually a first board that I made. So, yeah, I would say stick around and we're gonna be making our board. So, for the purpose of this video, and also because I lack a double layered cardboard, well, but I'm first gonna explain you the basics on how I build this board. So, what I did was I took me a large piece of double cor corrugated cardboard and drew out 90 centimeters by 90 centimeters by 90 centimeters by 90 centimeters so that's actually basically uh, almost a meter on a meter on a meter on a meter hmm? that's where i started uh, for when that was cut out i then decided to myself um, where the streets how the outlay is going to be and i took I simply took a marker and started drawing roughly sketching where i want my streets my pavements where that where i wanted that to be when that was done i uh like you know the house we've made i make sure that for um every sidewalk i mean every piece of pavement the house would fit on it so I simply, I'm going to take a, a ruler for this one, you remember the measurements of the garage probably, but basically you take the entire piece and you measure it, but I'm measuring it this now for you guys, but uh, this is 21 centimeters on, yeah on 22, but basically if you make sure your pavement is about 23 centimeters on 23 centimeters at least that you would get a nice square of 23 centimeters almost every building you make will fit nicely upon your board see and that's actually important that you don't have the building standing in the middle of the street because that would simply look ridiculous so uh, let's say i have this garage building it fits nicely on my pavement it around a little so you can get a better view and actually see this was a smaller pavement but this is actually a bigger building that's why i say if you take 23 centimeters it is bigger than this because this is 21 so it just fits my building but um yeah so you simply put your building on there but as for instance for the apartment building the apartment building fits nicely on the pavement so these are standard measures the garage is a little bigger but yeah as you can see uh, looks nice you can place your garage also here just the garage is closer to there won't be no, no pavement but you can simply place this against here uh, then you have double buildings you can place the apartment here, on the side of your road, I don't know how easy you guys can see this, but I'll attempt to show you. Just quickly placed it on here, like so. And you're starting to get a nice filled street, which you can use for your Batman or a zombie or whatever uh, terrain you guys want to make it for see so yeah um, 
for the next step, as I said, make sure you take at least 23 on 23 centimeters per pavement. It will make your buildings fit nicely upon there. You can make it as I did here. Remove this, make it larger. Uh, there's that side street, uh, side pavement, sorry, I have here, which is actually smaller, but it still fits our apartment building, even our garage. Barely, but it fits, as you can see. So, continuing on. Get yourself some double corrugated cardboard and cut it out 90 centimeters by 90 centimeters. That's actually the standard size for a Batman board. But you can go bigger, guys. If you want to, you could go smaller, go 60 by 60, but then you are a little bit limited to your, <coughs> excuse me, the terrain pieces you are, can set up on your board. So yeah, you start with the basics. Get some double layered cardboard. Cut it 90 by 90 centimeters and start by drawing, simply sketching out with uh, a marker or a pencil where you want your pavements to be. Measure them to be at least 23 on 23 centimeters. Okay, now uh, for this purpose, I don't have double layered cardboard anymore. I've shot through it very quickly. Um, <coughs> but I'm actually just going to make an extension for this board. So. And seeing as I don't have the double layered cardboard, I'm going to be simply using a foam board to make my board. Okay, stay tuned. So I've taken some foam board, a nice big sheet, and I simply place the foam board on the edge of my piece. Make sure it aligns on both sides, the edges. And then I'm going to search for my marker. Here it is, simply pull this board in front of the camera so you guys can actually see what the hell I'm doing and simply mark where the edge of my board is going to be, like so. I don't know if you, yeah, you could have seen. I've taken my long ruler, it's not even big enough, but it'll do. Check if this is about the same that it's straight. I simply mark out a straight line on your board. Make sure it is straight, guys, or it will look very weird afterwards. So you see, I've drew, drawn a straight line. And as I said, guys, um, I don't have enough room to make an entire board, but I am going to make an extension <coughs> of this one. As you can see, I will place it again, against it, and everything lines up perfectly. Okay? Now my advice to you guys is take cardboard. Don't take the foam board. I have plenty of foam board, but take cardboard. It's a lot cheaper and because, yeah, otherwise you'll just burn through the foam board that you can use for other projects like more buildings and stuff like that. But simply for the purpose of this video, I'm using foam board, but use cardboard, guys. Okay? Now I'm simply taking my metal ruler to the thing. Make sure the lines, that it's straight. I'm simply going to... Cut through it softly because I have to be a little careful that I don't cut through my uh, of this table I'm working on. So I'm being a little cautious at the moment. mat underneath it. Okay, now I can cut through the line. And I don't
don't have to worry about killing my table. There we go. Now, this piece you can keep it for other things. Just smoothen out the sides, just use your hand, but be careful for paper cuts. I've had many of them, but you can use some sanding paper or uh, simply a paper towel or anything. So, okay, now we have the extension of our board. Or in your case, if you're doing this uh, and you're making a full board, you have the 90 by 90 centimeters. I have 90 centimeters like so and about, I don't know, uh, let me have a look. Okay, I have 90 centimeters like that and 70 centimeters like this, but, well, that doesn't matter. Now, okay, continuing. What I want to do is actually make a harbor board with this extension. So <clears throat> this will actually, this part here, we're going to be building a bridge. But the bridge will be a separate video. But And this part here will actually be something that runs up towards um, yeah, a harbor port, something like that. Just basically a harbor here. And we're going to make a small bridge for that as well, so I will show you how. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me. What I did, um, I first compared it to my original board. Let me show you. Because I'm going to make an extension of this, this board, the apocalyptic one. You have to be careful because the boards you make and the extensions you make on them, that they line up correctly. So basically what I did... I uh, we don't know if I have enough room, basically, I will try. So I have aligned them up, so the streets match, okay? so the streets match on both sides. Now, as I said, I decided to do a harbor thing, so you can see this was pavement, so here uh, I will be making some more pavement on there, but this is actually something that can fit your cars, a little parking spot or something. Uh, the street will run up here, here will come a separate piece, a gate, where you can enter, enter a building, things like that, doesn't matter, use your imagination. Um, one thing I uh, will mention already is the way I measure my streets, my streets are exactly 6 inch in length. So my streets are always 6 inches, see? That's from the left to the right, from the right to the left. This is this part, the width of the street is always 6 inches, so you can easily measure at the halfway point to be 3 inches. I find that to be a good, uh, a good size for the, our boards. See? Let's take our SWAT car. It's nice. Parking space. Looks nice. Essentially, it's a nice size for the streets, six inches. And if you do that all the time, and you line them up, your terrain will match and fit, which is actually very important. So basically, yeah, this is going to be my extension. This part is going to be water, okay? So this is simply going to be water. I forgot one thing I need to fill out quickly. That's... like so okay so find a design in your head that fits you do that for your original board your extensions no matter what but basically uh, the most important thing is when you're building a board have the idea in your head so first of all as I said I, with this one I had the idea the other one actually the previous one I was inspired by a guy who has an awesome YouTube channel as well, Atelit, uh, that's Tr Sergeant Tristan's hobby. He also makes some, made some excellent pieces for terrain for Batman and does a lot of cool things. So uh, Atelit, if you're watching, Tristan, thanks dude, because you've inspired me to make my first board, the other one. It's totally his design. But uh, I went on from this one and, well, made it myself. Uh, well, I made both of them myself, but this one is my own invention. 
So I decided to expand our board. So for those of you who are building a new board, remember 90 by 90 centimeters. A nice 90 by 90 square. It's a good size for your battle boards. Uh, continuing on, before I ramble too much, <laughs> sorry guys. Uh, what I'm going to do now is basically I'm going to make our pavements. Which we're also going to be using, you guessed it, foam board. So we take our foam board, I'm going to slide this battle board aside. We take our foam board and simply have a look. size and just put it on it's gonna be that 3d part right it's gonna be the pavement because I don't put pavements underneath my buildings I did before but I don't do it now anymore I put the pavements that pavements directly on my boards so that's free of choice of course for you guys uh, but yeah first thing we're gonna do is make some pavements so I take my ruler gonna measure this in centimeters guys and the pavement here is let me see exactly 27 centimeters on let me look on 27 and a half so I for me I have 27 centimeters here and 27 and a half here just mark that out with a pencil, but don't press it down too hard. Well, it doesn't matter actually because it will be gluing on top of this. You don't have to peel the paper off, okay guys? It is not necessary. You are going to have to peel it off on your pavement piece. So I've marked it out 27 by 27 and a half. Put that aside. Take my board. Take my ruler. Find the most straightest edge I can find to start from there. And I'm simply going to measure out 27 and a half by 27. Now, for pavements, what I like to use is a simple, uh, helpful tool like this so that I'm always straight. So I simply roll it against it. Draw my line, do the same on this part, it does make your job a lot easier to make straight pavements. <laughs> and then when it's done, I can simply trace the line because my hook isn't all that long but it suffices for what I need to do. Now next we're going to do is simply cut this out. mat again my knife you can use a ruler of course guys I'm simply doing it like this it's actually advised to use a ruler it will make your uh, finished piece be better more, look more better but no, my hand is rather steady so I don't mind doing it like this. There we go. Put our board piece again. Place it on, see if it matches up. matches up nicely. See? Looking nice. So we have our first piece of pavement right here. Now with this you are gonna have to start by peeling that damn paper off unfortunately. As in the previous videos it's rather warm here so I'm lucky that the paper is willing. I should have shut up right there. Okay. Well, do it slowly. But if you have the dollar store foam core, you guys go 
and you're done. Well, anyways, you don't need to st me, see me uh, struggle with this thing, I'll be right back. Okay, so WrestleMania is over and I've won. <laughs> so, now I take my ruler, take a pencil, and I'm gonna mark out uh, one inches on each side. So I'm gonna start with, always start with the bottom here. I'm gonna mark out one inch, one inch. Well, you know the deal, keep going. One inches all the way. And I know I switch a lot between inches and centimeters, but that's just what works for me. Now do the same on this side and start from the back. If you if you flip, always start from the edge of your board, working inwards. Okay, just makes it better. So for this part as well, I'm gonna be measuring one inch. Do that for all four sides. Same here. Start from the out. In. Now you get the idea. And then again this part right here we start from here I know this is the boring part guys I'm sorry I will fast forward this or skip ahead as I usually do but I thought it was important to show you this so now what I do don't take the first one yet take this or better yet start from the back I start connecting the first one you created. See? Simply draw the lines. And continue on this way. I'll be back when I've done that. Now I've done all these lines. And we're gonna continue on with these. Also start from the bottom up. Quickly show you one thing. Here, this isn't a this isn't a complete piece, but that's okay, that's what we need. So from the bottom, we work our way upwards. Those nice inch squares. Uh, not that I, because for my fan, uh, my RPGs we never use inches or squares, but uh, I find for my pavements, I find it for my battle boards. I think one inch squares is actually a nice fit. So yeah. Okay, so we've got ourselves some nice grid pattern here. Um, the next one I'm going to do is simply, this is about half a centimeter. Let's actually, let's even be precise and let's measure a half a centimeter. Mark out half a centimeter. And 
simply connect these lines. And now I'm going to connect this one all the way to this one. See? We get something like this. Now for the lines that don't uh, align with the side, just simply you can use your ruler for this if you want to, of course. Simply make sure all the lines connect to your pavement piece. Okay, <coughs> excuse me. What I then do, again, take my ruler. Actually, no, we're gonna do the pencil part first. So, halfway of the pavement edge, we're gonna draw lines. Just the same like you would do with bricks, half the way the pavement. Just simply draw a line like so. Okay. And at the corner, just make one at an angle, always, and halfway. You can measure this out, of course. I'm simply rushing this along. It doesn't matter if they're straight as long as I know where they are. And now for the next part. I'm simply gonna take my knife, my box cutter, I'm gonna use a ruler for this, and simply score it softly down my grid pattern that we've made with the one inch lines. And simply drag my knife through because the intention is that afterwards when you've done your you can simply like this and you get that nice indentation that will give that 3D pavement look. Okay, so I'm going to be right back when I've done all the lines this way, this way, in the sides as well. Okay, so I'll be back when that is done. Okay, so what did I do? Still have a few more lines to draw out, but basically I took a ballpoint pen, but you can use a pencil and anything. Simply have this one simply I've scored, taken my ballpoint pen, dragged it through the lines as you can see. It's very simple to do guys. Yep. Get that nice 3D feel. I've also free-handed a few cracks in there, you don't have to do that, you can simply just take a few cracks in there you don't have to do that but you can if you want to okay so that's actually our first piece of pavement is done see looking good that's our first piece now just to be on the safe side if you want to measure the remeasure it again it's not necessary because you can see it aligns so you don't have to be it's okay now we simply have to do that for this side and this side, and I have a small piece I need to do here. I'm leaving this open actually, so I have to do one, two, and three. That's all that remains. If I have enough foam board, but probably I will find some more extra. <laughs> but well, yeah, basically you get the idea. So yeah, that's how I uh, do my battle boards and my pavements. Now I'm going to do the other pavement sides and when that is done I'm going to show you how you're going to do the water, okay? I'll be back. Oh yeah, one thing I should mention which I forgot to is actually for the water part I am going to peel off the paper. So it's not going to be a fun job but I simply am going to score make it a little easier for myself. I'm going to score a line. And I'm going to do that actually on both, uh, on both sides. It will just make things
it's easier for me to peel off this rigid foam board paper. And maybe it won't. Oh. I'm telling you guys, you have the dollar store foam boards. You are lucky. Look at the crap <laughs> I am stuck with. <laughs> so this is going to take me a long while. A very long while. But I'm going to peel off... Sorry. I am going to peel off this entire strip. When that is done, I'm going to make the other uh, pavement parts and then I will be gluing them on. Pavement, 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 small strip of pavement. And then next video, part two of this video, we're going to be making our water. This is going to probably be a three part video, guys. So first is simply how we make our board with the pavement. The second part will be how we're going to do our water. And the third part will be finishing off our entire board. So thank you for watching, guys. This was Aurethian. Take care and see you next time. Bye now. Hi, guys. Welcome back. So since last time I told you I was going to do the water, cut it out. Now, peeling off the paper, you know, I can be rather impatient. Kind of pissed me off. So what I did was I simply cut out the water piece. So this will remain the same. I took a piece of cork. Also, you can use simple cardboard, guys. No worries. And what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to glue this on here and this on here, which is actually, in a way, I'm kind of happy that I'm doing this right now. Sometimes some things change while you're crafting, and I'm happy because now I can make a wider bridge and have more water. So it will actually look like a bigger board that will extend a lot more so yeah that's actually a good thing to be quite honest so basically I'm gluing under uh, cork because I, as I mentioned I ran out of ran out of cardboard but uh, I will be using cork and simply glue that underneath here so this is basically a board by itself and now we have a very big piece, but I will show you later. Uh, first I'm going to do is, uh, I know I was going to glue these pavements off first, but at first this kind of pissed me off very much, so I'm deciding to now glue on our foam board to the cork. And for that I'm simple, simply using standard PVA white glue. Put a good amount on there. And simply go it on. I'm gonna turn it like this so I can put a little bit more pressure on it. And just simply glue the foam board to the cork. Make sure the edges nicely like so voila and now I'm simply gonna let yeah this was actually an experiment I wanted to do my streets on cork first but because uh, I have a lot of cork left over from uh, my my tile scapes uh, the Scotty invented so and for this we're basically gonna do the same just make sure your streets why not? So, well, I'm gonna glue this on exactly the same way as we did. So do that right now. As you can see, I'm not being stingy with my glue. I want a good coverage, a good bond, and the cork will actually make it bond really good, guys. It does absorb some of the the white glue, but makes for a nine bond. Just make sure that you do hit the edges and everything, guys. That there is enough glue there to hold it in place. So yeah, same deal. Make your board. Glue it on. Now, what I do 
is simply take a few heavy parts I'm gonna put because this is a soft bench I'm gonna put this on uh, something rather hard and put some weight on there so it won't curl up okay so I'll be back when that is dried so I've glued all my sidewalks on there but as you notice with the cork the board is a little wobbly now if you've used a double layered cardboard underneath you probably wouldn't have that problem it will be stiff as a board but in my case what I'm gonna do <clears throat> is simply to stiffen it up pour a whole bunch of white glue on there and I'm being stingy with the white glue Never, I never are am with these projects. So. so I put a good amount of white glue on there. Take a brush, some water. I simply start by covering the entire piece in the watered down PVA. But it doesn't have to be too watered down, guys. It can be a rather thick layer. So, do that, and when this is done, I'll be back. Now, that's done. What I am going to do now is simply make a mixture of water and PVA. Do all my sidewalk pieces, because I want to black bond this thing. And because I've peeled the paper off, uh, it won't melt the foam. So, simply take your PVA. Take a cup of water, squirt a good amount to make a nice uh, thick cover layer of water down PVA and brush it on your entire sidewalks and also this what I would like to say is these side pieces here if you're gonna black bomb it make sure you cover them with PVA as well as long also with the outsides of the board because otherwise it will melt this so make sure every part of exposed foam you see that you make that you cover that with white PVA okay so you simply made a mixture of it's rather thick watered down PVA and that's okay because I prefer it that way and just cover your entire exposed foam part like so if you are not going to, uh, if you're not going to black bond this, you don't have to do this step. But I am gonna black bond this. So yeah, basically, make sure you cover every piece, even in the cracks. And don't forget them because the, uh, the paint will get in there and melt it from the inside. That's not a fun thing to have happen. we go covered the entire piece I've hit my sides here here along the side here and the outside here so I've covered the entire piece in white PVA I'm gonna do the same with that that one and the small part over there and then I'll be back maybe a quick tip uh, before we continue for those of you who don't have the structured paint because I use the structured paint on this but for those of you do, who don't have it it's a good thing to put uh, yeah just regular play sand grab a handful and smear it in your hands and let the sprinkle sprinkle and texture the entire pieces of uh, yeah whatever you want textured okay so that that's a good thing to do now before you black bomb it okay so my entire piece is covered, there we go, you can see the other board, it matches up nicely if I hold them together, so yeah, there we go, now let's simply wait for this uh, thing to dry and then we'll continue, and then we're gonna black bomb this and then we'll be back, so take it and stay tuned. Okay, so my board is dry almost and yeah I'm gonna go outside and black bomb this and when that is done I will see you again in part two of this video thank you for watching part one guys and see you next time take care now bye bye